a cup of that. Let's go. I'm on a journey to discover the truth. Living life and recovery is lovely. You got the power in you. Surround yourself with positive energy. Judges hitting people with provocative penalties. Need to make a change. Advocate to change the laws. Prove to people that it's not insane. When you stand behind a cause, I'm here to speak about the pain. Recover loud to normalize the disease that's been killing all my friends and my family. The time is now to let it all go and recover loud. The benefit is healthy people, family and friends that never have to overdose ever again never have to plead out to a lesser offense i'm proud to say that i recover loud i never thought i could but i'm so proud that i discovered how to live my life again controlling my own destiny i needed recovery i still need it desperately addiction never defined my identity. i recover loud here to tell my own story i recover proud save a life of like 40 i recover loud yeah i recover loud i recover loud yeah I recover thou, I recover thou, here to tell my own story. I recover proud, save a life of like 40. I recover thou, yeah, I recover thou, I recover thou, yeah, I recover thou. I recover, I recover loud. 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 Another episode of Recover Loud. I'm your host, Mike Paddleford, and I Recover Loud. Tonight I get to sit with a good friend of mine, Justin Roy. Justin, uh, I've known you for almost four years to the day. Um, when I first entered recovery, uh, you were one of the first people I met. And uh, as we sit here today, uh, you know, we've, we've gone different directions. But we're still both searching for recovery and doing the best we can with what we've got today. Um, can you uh, tell us a little bit about when, when I first met you, what was going on? Yeah, uh, like Mike said, I'm Justin, I'm recovering of hot addict. Um, we actually met in treatment. I've been in a, a, a cycle of residential treatment experiences for the past couple of decades. And I think it was my first time at Milestone in Old Orchard Beach, a residential therapeutic community. I was a part of that community and Mike showed up, you know, and we ended up, yeah, we, it's kind of a brotherhood when you're in treatment together, so we became friends. Yeah. Naturally, and I, I left ahead of you, but you stayed sober, and I wasn't able to. So. Yeah, and then it was a, a couple of years after, um, you know, I also uh, was, was kicked out of that program. Yeah. And um, But uh, it was a couple of years later, I ran into you in Lewiston, and, uh, you know, we started talking again. But, uh, you know, just to go back, um, so you, you mentioned that you've been, you know, do, going to treatment for decades now. Um, when did you first start using drugs? Oh, I don't know. It's pretty, I think, pretty ordinary textbook experience for it was uh, like opening Pandora's box, kind of, if I could reference. It was in high school. I mean, I didn't transition well into high school as far as socially. I like. I had trouble with being accepted, uh, and ultimately that's why I, I used my, took my first drink, it was at a keg party, mm. and uh, I think summer, my right before my junior year, I think, and uh, you know, and smoking some weed that night, just like the regular social progression of a high school mm -hmm. kid, and like little did I know it. It changed the whole trajectory of my life once I had the awareness that I could alter my state of consciousness and how I felt mm. with an external substance. It was a game changer because in, in the beginning, drugs were never a problem, they were a solution. 
right. to the problem, which was how I felt about myself. And yeah. So um, in high school, you did what you know a lot of your friends were doing. You were drinking. You smoked a little bit of weed. When did it, it become more serious? Um, at the time when I initially got exposed to uh, alcohol and weed, I was drama club president. I was like in several honors writing classes, really, and kind of involved. I got bullied a lot because I was an artsy kid. I like theater and I was in show choir. These things aren't necessarily popular yeah. in high school. And uh, I took off like a rocket. It was like a, within a matter of weeks, I was transitioning into like hallucinogens and experimenting. Mm. And uh, the obsession and like fascination uh, with chemicals has been like long lasting and I took off like a rocket. Within my first year and a half, I ended up trying like cocaine and opiates and actually end up in overdosed and for the first time and going into a treatment, residential treatment day one at 20 years old, 19, 20 years old right away. So that was over 20 years ago? Yeah, almost 25 years ago. Yeah. 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 Um, so basically you entered recovery at an early age. Here we are. The seed was planted, so to speak. Yeah. Well, my opinion, uh, recovery is the the entire process of change. You know, from pre-contemplation all the way through to lapse or relapse. And the cycle just keeps going. You know, when we, when we stop using su uh, substances, we're still looking for change, we're still changing. Um, and that cycle just keeps going and, and sometimes it involves, you know, a, a uh, reoccurrence of use. Um, but you went into treatment, uh, that was your first time? Yes. Uh, how many times would you guess that you've, you've been in a treatment center over the years? Uh, it's hard to say. Um, for the next 20 years I would enter a pattern of like, active addiction, uh, it becoming unmanageable either with an overdose or getting arrested. It, it's a progressive illness and I'm, you know, survived innumerable overdoses. It's um, kind yeah. of mir miraculous that I'm, I'm still around when so many of my friends have passed away. Yeah. There's addiction and overdoses and with the opiate epidemic is fairly common so I've uh, been beaten into a state of reasonableness so to speak like yeah. where I have like it's like I can't live with the drugs anymore they don't actually work the way they used to and I can't stand my life sober either yeah. which is why you need recovery and connection mm -hmm. and new associations and you, you're right it's a holistic thing it's a more of a lifestyle change right. and it has just as much to do with your behavior and how I treat people and what I do when nobody's looking as it does not using drugs and these days with the advent of MAT and harm reduction it's a much different model than old school total abstinence 12 steps which is like my roots mm. so it's been an adjustment for me because I'm I've been on Suboxone for 10 years now yeah. as part of a treatment plan but like the medication only works as well as the recovery backing it up yeah so um, while you're using the MAT are you able to to stay away from the substances or <clears throat> for the most part for the most part but like over the summer disconnected you know with COVID and I'm like kind of displaced that I don't have any friends or family around up here I had a, a really hard time because while Suboxone helped a lot with cravings for fentanyl and other opiates I still had a problem with amphetamines that I developed mm -hmm. and uh, that ravaged my life more quickly. Yeah. It, the erosion process was much more immediate with crystal meth and I've kind of been spiraling. My last time in treatment was about almost two years ago now at Milestone for the second time mm -hmm. and uh, I actually I've been trying to do things my way and I honestly haven't been able to get my footing or like maintain employment or manage anything. So 
um, even on MAT because I don't have the recovery the action backing up my medication so yeah. it's actually kind of ineffective in my case in all honesty. Yeah so you've spent a lot of time you know in treatment searching for treatment yes trying to get better yeah you have my adult life and what do you think holds you back Fuck. Uh, i mean in in life in general the only serious defect that have, has held me back or caused me to not follow through with things and to not achieve goals like the whole idea of what I had for a life for me and the potential I showed when I was younger. I never would have imagined that I identify as an addict and I don't find that particular label offensive. I've put a lot of years of my life uh, on the line investing into uh, having, you know, that identity it wasn't intended but I don't, what holds me back, I don't know. I. Uh, for me, I would say like complacency and like a lack of discipline over an extended period of time because the whole key to recovery is service, staying out of self, you know, which means service work, helping others, being involved like this shit that you're doing mm -hmm. here is like, uh, this is part of a recovery plan and a recovery network. Yeah. That's why like you're doing so well is because you have a lot going on. Like I'm not, it's an immersion. Like recovery requires immersion. Yeah. Like all areas of your life has to be saturated with it. Otherwise it won't work. Anything I put, I, I, de I lose sense of what my priorities are. Anything I put before my recovery, I will lose. That's ultimately a promise universally yeah. for everyone in recovery that I've ever met. So, you know, because without it, there's no manageability, and I'm not honest, and I don't have integrity, mm. and I don't have, I'm not a big company, I don't have trust, so the relationships are poor, or toxic, or even, or, or harmful. Yeah. So, that, that's like my norm, the chaos of it, so I don't stay doing well very long, mm. and it's subconscious. So, you're actually, um, you're not from Aroostook County originally? No, I've been here about a year. Okay. And um, so, how did you get here? You. <laughs> I was spiraling at, at the end of my second year, homeless after leaving Milestone. A really bad meth relapse. I left Milestone. Disgraced. It was like, like a dishonorable discharge in the military. But uh, what was the question? <laughs> what brought you to Aroostook County? Yeah, I was homeless and living out of the woods in Lewiston, Maine, out of a tent. And Mike was working for Blue Sky MIT counseling at the time. And we crossed paths again at the Jeremy Hiltz has a rest center down there in Lewiston. And there's like recovery atmosphere where we get reunited. And uh, him and his wife at the time were coming up here to do the Recover Loud uh, assembly. And uh, he invited me up to relocate. And I went to the sober house and I didn't have nothing to lose and I ended up in the men's sober house and got introduced to Caribou and being part of the county. Yeah. Yeah. And uh It's been an interesting year. What's happened? Yeah, so but I met you the first week I went uh into treatment back in twenty eighteen. It was November tenth. Um <laughs> I'll take your word. Yeah, I'll remember that day because it was important for me. Uh, last year, it was November 6th, uh, that I held my Recover Loud Aroostook event, which celebrated my three years in recovery. Um, by the time this show airs uh, on Thursday, that'll be our, our, my fourth year uh, since I started recovery. And, nice. um, you know, so last year at this time, I brought you up to the event. You, you went into the sober house. Um, how has the county been for you? It's been kind of a mixed bag, honestly. Uh, I try to stay grateful and uh, reasonably positive if I can. But I mean, it's had its ups and downs, you know. I had a good times starting off in the sober house. Um, I had a job at Cary Medical Center as a nutritional tech that I'd gotten hooked up with um, by having supports in the community and man, just like lined up for success. Things just were getting too good for me as making a great paycheck. 
I don't know if it's a thing about not feeling like I'm worth, worthy of, of joy or things going well or what. I, if I dissected it, I haven't looked at it that hard, but I sabotaged it before long with uh, struggling with relapsing with the crystal methamphetamine. Um, one thing that I uh, noticed, the, the difference between uh, the county and Lewiston, which helped me, was a recovery community. You know, people coming together that aren't using drugs, um, that, uh, you know, are there to support each other. And, you know, we're really trying to build that here in the county. Um, did you find a recovery community here that you were able to get involved in and feel supported by? Yeah, uh, particularly when I was at the Caribou Men's Recovery House. Um, because people there, we all have the same motive, uh, in theory, mm -hmm. about changing our lives. I, and then you do have like the recovery center, which is next door to AMHC. So it's like they're it's kind of like in clusters where there are recovery like yeah. groups or network. It's harder a because the county is so big and rural, mm -hmm. and um, so today today we're recording. It's it's. It's Halloween. It's October Halloween. 31st. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Um, and uh, just to, to touch on, on one of the scary things going on this Halloween is um, after tonight, your the funding for your hotel room um, is, is done. Yeah. And that's for all of the people in the hotels. Hundreds of people, yeah. They're relying on um, the hotels for shelter. Yeah. So at, as of tomorrow, they're going to be uh, on the streets with no place to go. Um, Unless they have made other plans, yeah. yeah. Yes, and um, you in particular, um, you've made other plans. So, <laughs> right now, are you sober? Yes. How long have you been sober? Uh, I like, I'm coming right up on like the 30 day mark, coming back formally, like off of illicit drugs. I It's challenging because I'm on MAT, mm -hmm. and I, I have a hard time actually with like, sobriety on being suboxone dependent but that's more of my own shit yeah i'm but as far as being in recovery and being serious and wanting to change my life it's been uh, a little longer than usual this time and i'm taking it a little more seriously because circumstances like um so I, just, I didn't have much time to figure out a plan for me to stay safe and to move forward because yeah. the streets are traumatizing and, and the cold up here. And the cold is something to be fearful of. Yeah, sure. I mean, the cold can kill here. Yeah. So, um, going outside is scary. Yeah. Especially if you don't have support or people to lean on. So for you, tonight being your last night at the hotel, what is your plan starting tomorrow? The plan that my higher power has laid out, because I basically just turn, turn it over. I have a spiritual, connection and I had to have a higher power to rely on and I have been doing a lot of the footwork here to create a plan I have a lot of resources to look into and it, as it look pans out I'm gonna be going into a sober living uh, you're going to it to another sober house sober living yep I haven't been in a sober house other than the caribou house in the last two years at all I haven't wanted to. I've had bad experiences, but I'm pretty confident. I'm in a pretty stable place, and my intentions are really good. Yeah. And it seems like a hand up in Lewiston. For one thing, there's very few beds anywhere. Yeah. And they had availability, and I got to interview and got accepted. So I've got some wreckage to wade through, like legally. Shit that I'm gonna deal with. It's not just gonna go away whether I'm in recovery or not. That's part of it. But for the most part, I'm really grateful tomorrow morning. I haven't seen my family in almost like a year. And I'll be back down and going down to Lewiston where I have family support and a recovery network is familiar. And I have pretty high hopes. I feel pretty blessed that there, um, there was a pathway that was created. Yeah. Ultimately, and for a while, I didn't know what the hell I was gonna do. Yeah, it's, it's a scary situation. But yeah. so yeah, yeah, another pick myself up, dust myself off, give it an honest go. And I just turned 42, I'm not getting any younger. Yeah. I'm starting to break down. 
I can't psychologically handle another decade of substance abuse, so yeah, it's time well, to change. I, I was 42 when I met you mm -hmm. uh, at Milestone. Uh, I'm 46 now. And, uh, you know, my life is, is quite a bit different than it was the day I met you, and I'm, I'm grateful for the, the path I've been on. Um, you know, and through this journey, I've met people like you um, who have helped me along the way. Um, you know, and being able to help you these la this last year and a half, two years that I've, I've since we've reconnected has been, uh, you know, very helpful for me uh, to get me to where I am. And as we like to say, you know, connection is the opposite of addiction. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I'm glad that I'm able to be that connection, or a connection for you, and glad that you're a connection for me. So, uh, I wish you a lot of luck tomorrow. You know I love you, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to be praying for you. And, uh, you know, I'm just a, a phone call away. And Yeah, uh, things will be okay, you know? Like, you're just a grateful addict is a sober addict. Anything that you could say to somebody who might be struggling out there today, maybe somebody that doesn't know where they're going tomorrow, or how they're going to get there? Um, I mean, for me, it's like I say, keep the faith. Like, I can't tell anybody else what to do, but for me, it's really helpful to have some kind of relationship with a higher power. You know, I like, I hesitate to use the word God, but you know what I mean? And I, an ability to like kind of just let go. You know, and like turn it over and have some trust in like the universe, so to speak. I know that sounds kind of hocus pocus, but it's true. Like things are always going to go the way they're intended to go. And a lot of times I just need to stay out of the way. Like, and like not be in the driver's seat. And then things typically, for me, first thought wrong. Like I'm going to mess things up. I'm fallible. And also I would say nothing changes if nothing changes. Yeah. Like what you said, recovery, you change everything but your name. And, uh, you know, and if you're able to do that, then it's, I don't know, maybe a successful life in recovery that's consistently different and better and progressive in a good way is possible. I like to think so. Yeah. I feel like I keep trying and trying and trying. Yeah. I don't know why, but that's just how it is. But Justin, again, thank you. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, hearing about your trip down and what it's like when you get there. Yeah, say hi to some people for you. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, we'll look forward to uh, updates in the future. All right. Love you, bud. Love you too. Thanks. Recover loud, everyone. Tonight I get to say goodbye to my friend Justin Roy. It's not really goodbye, it's see you later, because I have hopes for him. He's going to start his new life tomorrow at a new sober house. And hopes are high right now, because he's sober. Recover loud, everyone. Welcome to Rick's Redemption, where we are family owned and operated. We strive in cleanliness, honesty, and customer appreciation. Rick's Redemption is a recovery ready employer who believes wholeheartedly in redemption. Here at Rick's, we support Recovery Rustic and definitely are proud to recover loud. God bless.
Anderson's Auto Repair, locally owned and operated in Sweden, Maine, specializes in all make, all model vehicle diagnosis and repair. Each individual service is backed by our nationwide TechNet, two year, 24,000 mile warranty. Call or stop in to schedule an appointment today. Anderson's Auto, for wherever the road takes you. Hi, I'm Mike Paddleford, and I recover loud. On August 8th, Maine's expanded version of the Good Samaritan Law goes into effect. This law is intended to make it more likely for someone to dial 911 in the case of a drug-related overdose. This law removes the penalties and the threat of prosecution for all drug-related offenses and most non-violent crimes, as well as probation violation and parole revocation. It is now safe for us to dial 911 in the case of an overdose. We don't have to take care of our friends alone. Please help save a life by dialing 911. If you or someone you know would like to carry naloxone, you can reach out to me at recoveryotr18 at gmail.com. Recover loud, everybody. I'm on a journey to discover the truth Living life and recovery is lovely You got the power in you Surround yourself with positive energy Judges hitting people with provocative penalties Need to make a change Advocate to change the laws Prove the people that it's not insane When you stand behind a cause I'm here to speak about the pain Recover loud to normalize the disease That's been killing all my friends And my family The time is now to let it all go And recover loud The benefit is healthy people Family and friends that never have to overdose ever again never have to plead out to a lesser offense i'm proud to say that i recover loud i never thought i could but i'm so proud that i discovered how to live my life again controlling my own destiny i needed recovery i still need it desperately addiction never defined my identity. i recover loud here to tell my own story i recover proud save a life of like 40 i recover loud yeah i recover loud i recover loud yeah I recover thou, I recover thou, here to tell my own story. I recover proud, save a life of like 40. I recover thou, yeah, I recover thou, I recover thou, yeah, I recover thou. I recover, I recover loud. I recover, I recover loud. I recover, I recover loud. I recover, I recover loud.